Hello and welcome back, everyone, to Dr. No Cast, the LJL getting started up for you here. We have quite the exciting match ahead of us, as this is going to be V3 taking on Sengoku Gaming, the first and second seed going up to bat. And I could not think of teams that deserve this more. This is just... Both of these teams have just really come so far from where they started. Uh, V3 especially, after somewhat of an underwhelming performance in the spring split, they really rallied back very hard. Sengoku definitely came from the spring split well and established, and they've only carried through that performance... As now we're looking at a V3 esports that reminds us of the 2019 V3 esports that what that did go to finals with DFM. Now, one thing I do want to already start talking about when you're looking at these two teams and you're saying, okay, these are the first and second seeds. How did we get here? Well, you remember how last week we were talking a lot about Hawks Gaming, CGA, and Burning Core all don't have the most impressive stats by 15. A lot of their wins came from team fights in the later ends of the game, and that's really where advantages started to come out. Neither of these teams are those teams. These are teams that you are going to be looking at right here. Impressive stat lines by 15. These are teams that are going to be not just taking the fights to you whenever they get the chance, but they're comfortable on multiple play styles. They're comfortable early game, which really bodes well for having these matches not only be explosive in the later ends, you know, when you get towards your team fights, but from minute one, you can expect these teams to have things loaded in the tank. You can expect both of these teams to be coming out swinging or some possibly different drafts going in either direction. And even when you're looking at the individual stats of a lot of these players, they are very, very similar with only slight discrepancies here and there. Uh, Oppaman of Sengoku, for example, has slight edges on pause in terms of, his, in terms of his early stats and can be a little bit more of an early formidable foe. But then you compare the junglers of the two and it's right back in the other direction where Boogie is a little bit up on blank. Is it, and nothing is very extreme. There's no lanes that are just getting blown out by any of these teams. You could argue that... Perhaps, you know, when you're looking at Pyrian of Sengoku Gaming in the mid lane and you compare him, you compare his stats on paper to that of Ace from the mid lane of V3 Esports, and you could make some comparisons there, but let's keep in mind, Ace has been playing a lot of things like Galio mid, a lot of supportive picks, and really been setting up for his mid jungle duo so that Boogie can have that little extra carry potential. And I really think that's an important factor to start talking about V3 Esports on. As V3 Esports has just been a team that for so long now has been very, very dominant. They have shown time and time again that they come out with game plans in mind and Everyone on the team feels like they can play multiple roles. It feels like if it's not Boogie who's setting up to carry, you know, you have a top laner that's a little bit more supportive, or maybe the, it is Boogie that ends up playing the little bit more supportive role, and you put A's on things like LeBlanc or other kinds of champions. And while sometimes it can be the undoing for V3 Esports, I think that's a little bit of a good problem to have where there's too many competent players that somebody has to bite the bullet and set up for everyone else. You can't have five carries on your team comp and ultimately even when they're playing supportive picks it feels like they're playing carries where V3 Esports or even Reyna on something like a set support always feels like he is on the forefront he is tr he is working and he is coming out swinging so many highlight reel plays have been given over to him already so i definitely think that there's so much you can look at on v3 esports for not only getting plays made but then also just setting specific people up to carry moving around team fights beautifully and just overall having a very high threat potential from draft phase because 
okay, we didn't get a LeBlanc for the mid lane, so or we didn't get a Zoe as well. Maybe we don't give the carry roll over to Ace. Maybe we move it in the jungle if we hand Boogie over Lee Sin or Nidalee or any of the other picks. He has just been so deadly on over the course of this split. You, I've heard, I've said time and time again of my praises for uh, for V3 esports and for Boogie specifically as. In my opinion, the best jungler in the LJL at current, just so many times, you know, come hell or high water, they are just making plays work. And even in games where they are behind, it feels like if you're not putting them all the way down, then you you stand no chance. Because there have been games, even in this one here, most recent against Sengoku, where they were on the back foot. And the second Sengoku had man advantage and then decided to trade it out and say, okay, well, we'll, we'll have Oppman over in the mid lane and we'll try to engage on a 3v3. V3 Esports turn it on its head and are making value out of it. It's just, if you're not going to go all in on V3 Esports, they'll make you pay for it and they'll pull it off cleanly. This is a team that you need to make sure that the bubbles stop. You cannot try and just get away with something simple like you know this this play of ah oh, well don't worry we can we can maybe make it work with just 3v3s you know the the fight's already over no there is no taking the fight out of v3 esports until their fight is done and i love seeing that out of teams especially when you're talking about playoff chances when you're talking about there's not a whole lot of games you have left. You have your loser's bracket, effectively. If you lose this, you will be going down to facing the winner of tomorrow's match, being DFM versus CGA. So you do have that to look forward to, but your chances are slim. You do not have a whole lot of games left to play with, and right now, Worlds is on the line, and everyone is going to be having your eye, their eyes on you. So things to be keeping an eye out for. But speaking of which, and we were mentioning that last game, I want to talk a little bit about Sengoku Gaming. And ultimately, a team that I feel has not only reinvented themselves, but it felt like really found their identity coming out of the Springs flip. We had criticized them last split for awkward macro and this slowed down play style that they really seemed careful. They always wanted to get soul. They always wanted to add everything up and, you know, make sure all their chickens were in a line. But they really seem to have mastered the form and now are decently prepared for every team they face. I think Sengoku, coming into a lot of matches, looks well and more prepared than a lot of other teams. It feels like they do their research on their opponents. It feels like they are ready to play. Even in their game against V3 Esports, no other jungler has touched Boogie except for either Tussle, who is already out, and Blank, who spent so much time being completely unafraid of Boogie. He was running into him at every given opportunity in their last game. He was forcing fights. And while you could say, oh, that's a risky playstyle, if you have the confidence to take risky playstyles as Sengoku against the first seed team, that's confidence. And that tells me that you have something up your sleeve that you feel like you're able to pull it off. Now, you're in their best of five with them. This is where you're going to need to prove just that. Or was it just a fluke coming out of Sengoku? I do want to think one of the other things that kind of comes out from Sengoku is a sort of a sort of difference in playstyle when they're playing different teams. And I think they really we've seen a bit here and there about what they do to Sengoku or what they do to V3 esports. But I'm curious to see to see more. And you know, it's it's sort of if you're saying Goku, you've done your you've done your homework on all of the other teams in the LJL. You've done your main coursework of learning the meta ever since Spring Split and adjusting to the new season and learning how macro is supposed to work nowadays. Now you have your midterm here where you're going to play against V3 Esports, and then hopefully, if you make it, your final exam, which will be later on in Grand Finals, should they make it that far. V3 Esports is quite the mountain to climb. And in a game like this, everyone needs to bring their A game. There is nothing you can leave behind anymore. And you know how many of these teams have been showing up on the highlight reel. V3 Esports and Sengoku time and time again have been just going all out. And 
I think one of the things that it will definitely come down to, and one thing that I've always sort of talked about in the LJL, or at least when you're talking about best of threes, best of fives, things of that nature, you're going to want to be looking at mid-set adaptations and what you're doing for each of these teams as we take a look across v3 esports's lineup pause in the top lane boogie in the jungle ace in the mid lane archer on adc and reyna in support they will be running up against sengoku gaming with Oppaman in the top lane blank in the jungle period in the mid lane yatorbaesh in the bot lane and enti bringing up the support position and Honestly, none of these teams are slouches at any point in these games. And you can just see the stat lines coming out from these junglers. Both of them are just insane monsters. We did mention, of course, Boogie does have slight advantages here and there in the jungle. But it is... It, it's... I don't want to minimalize it because when you're talking about top two teams of the league, you want to... Any advantage like this does mean a lot. But that being said, how close it is speaks to how cl how close this matchup is for each team. Either of these players could be could make a pop off performance or make that one mistake that the other latches onto and completely blow them up. And that's why I think mid set adaptation is so important in this matchup specifically, where in in so many of these games, and this is something that I I had criticized uh, Sengoku specifically during the spring split pay playoffs was a lack of mid-set adaptation. And when you when you come from a region that is playing only best of ones, that is a very a fairly relevant that is a fairly relevant statistic. That is something that you you need to focus on. Because if you're not making the mid-set adaptations and you're not adjusting your drafts, then you're just going to butt your head against a wall over and over again and hope that it works. Now there is something kind of interesting that I want to talk about today, but will be more delved into tomorrow for those matches. Is blue side advantage in the LJL. And this is somewhat recent, but so far in playoffs already, we have seen a mere 80% win rate for blue side. In yesterday's matches, I believe in the CGA, or excuse me, the Burning Core versus DFM series. All five games that were played and won were on the blue side. It's about a 77.8% win rate of blue side right now. And we'll see if that comes to pass. It, things like Bard, I think, definitely start to make an, a difference on that. And how teams force objective fights around Baron and other timers like that. So there are different advantages to each side. And I'm curious to see how these teams will be expressing that, not only through their drafts, but in how they will operate their macro, if this is something that Sengoku is prepared for, and if this is something that B3 Esports is prepared to battle passes. They'll have first side pick for this one. And while we are going through, just waiting for the match to get started along here, we're not too far off. What are the last few things that I do kind of want to mention and I want to focus on specifically about v3 esports as we do pull up the stat screen here is ace in that mid lane and talked about it a little bit earlier but you can see here so many of the picks that he has are supportive in nature so many games of galio played set mid played and leblanc of course has just been a monster in the ljl specifically but honestly v3 esports has really found their stride i feel with the with a couple jungle champions swinging into the meta uh for boogie specifically the re-emergence of nidalee and the the when people started figuring out that lee sin can be played into trundle a little bit earlier on this split and things of that effect i definitely feel like he's found his stride and really been able to make the impact on the map that he wants Maybe not quite as prominently as he can, as jungle is still somewhat of a lower priority role. You want to be locking that in on the early ends of the draft, so you don't always get counter pick advantage. You can't be completely exploiting the enemy jungler. But that said, I definitely think that Boogie has been showing himself, and Blank for that matter, who's been taking great advantage of the graves that you see here and has a decent win rate on, him, on his lease in as well. 
One thing that does sort of worry me is that we have not seen we have not seen Archer's Jin uh, coming into the rift yet, and par possibly that could be signs that oh, you know, he just hasn't had the right circumstances to be picking it. It's worrying, and it's always going to be worrying because. You've made it this far and you haven't had to rely on Jin, but now a lot of ADs are racking up bans. So that's something that you're going to need to be considering. And if you don't have a Jin, it can really hurt your drafts. But I am somewhat trusting of V3 overall as a team. I definitely think they have what it takes to make this one work. And if you're asking me who the favorite is, I don't know if I can give you a definitive answer. I would like to say V3 Esports, but I could easily say Sengoku. And how we'll find that out, we'll start right in draft as we get this started up right here for you guys. V3 Esports versus Sengoku Gaming. We're starting up the draft here. Excuse me, just going to get you guys set up there. And of course, right away, we have Twisted Fate, Zoe, Galio, all being taken off the table. And most recently, the addition of Caitlyn meeting the ban table a lot these days. And Caitlyn is a little bit of an interesting one. Caitlyn has sort of been criticized as being a little bit overvalued since her re-emergence into the meta. She does have a slight nerf coming on the next few patch, but her addition of the 10 movement speed is actually huge for a champion like Caitlyn, who typically takes fleet footwork, but just being able to walk in and out of her max range autos to bully enemy ADs has really left an impression not only in the LJL but in many regions over LCK as well has seen a huge amount of Caitlyn bans ever since and LPL has also started to be looking at Caitlyn more critically. But we'll see what V3 decide to do here. Set is open. One of the strong blind picks of the meta at current. Karma also still on the table. And Karma is actually another interesting champion to kind of talk about more regionally to the LJL is that not a lot of teams really sh see the strength of Karma. There's a couple teams that still kind of pass Karma over as a little bit too risky to be sending into some of the solo lanes. But I'm, I like what Sengoku's doing so far. The Azir lock-in is not something that you typically see blinded. But Piri, in kind of saying that he wants his Azir, he says, just give me the comfort pick, let me take something that can team fight, and we'll solve the rest later. I'm curious to see how Sengoku is going to continue the draft from here. They'll lock themselves in the Nidalee. And this puts V3 in, in a little bit of an awkward position. While Boogie can play a lot of different champions and Set can be flexed into the jungle, you're not pressed to fix your to grab your jungle pickup right away. But a lot of the higher priority mid laners are already gone. But here we are. I believe, if I am not mistaken, this is going to be the first uh, Lilia of the LJL, and I could not be more excited to be seeing it already. Personally, I think the champion's adorable. I love her aesthetic. I think just I think she's adorable, but she's very very skirmish heavy and we've seen a couple regions starting to be popping her head or she's been poking her head into the LJL being or LCK being one most notably that I've been seeing a lot of Lilia in. But she can p post herself as a prominent skirmisher. Her clear speed is very good and if you get the right circumstances, a multi-man sleep off of your R ultimate ability is very, very strong coming out from V3 Esports. So, not a bad option to have. The downside, of course, is that Lilia is a very, very squishy champion. So, Renekton, who can dash on and land a stun very quickly, is going to be happy to be eating up some venison up in the jungle there. Well... We move into our second round of bans. Bola Bear and Morgana both going to be hitting the table as Morgana, another champion that has kind of seen a rise in popularity, but it's sort of an interesting position where Sengoku are in an awkward position to try and ban away champions from the side of V3 Esports. Banning away the Bola Bear almost doesn't even feel that impactful. Of course, you already have your Nidalee and your top laner, so you don't really need the Bola Bear, but on the side of V3 you have a set karma that can be flexed in between mid and top and support. So, 
very flex protective, and I think V3 Esports are definitely looking at a solid draft so far. While they ban away the Bard, the 80s are going to be coming in. Sengoku can draft up an Ash here, if they so choose. It really is a question of if they want to be looking more for the team fight and setting Pyrian up to carry on the Azir, or if you're looking for something with a little bit of Sin involved, if you want to be drafting alongside and moving the Renekton into a carry position and making the Nidalee have a lot more early game impact. But it will be the Ash locked in, and then that would mean that Jin is on deck for a V3 if they choose to go for it. Senna also available, so... A couple different options. With Senna, you do have options of using Dawning Shadow to help out skirmishes across the map with Lilia. But Aphelios actually going to be locked in here. And that's sort of a little bit of a blast from the past coming out from V3. Aphelios has certainly felt fallen far from good graces in the meta these days. As just takes a little bit too long to get online these days, especially with the nerfs to both his turret and to his flamethrower with runans. He's really fallen out of better graces, but also walking in a scion for V3 Eastwards. I imagine it's going into the top lane as scion is somewhat exploitable in the bot lane, but can stack up a lot of armor and just be a sort of rock in the top lane. Decent lane clear and well, as well on Scion, so you can kind of keep Renekton preoccupied and keep him from moving around the map. While Sengoku are going to be drafting themselves up a Nautilus. This is sort of an interesting draft coming out from V3 Esports. Now, you do have decent scaling options as a Felios. Aphelios with a couple items is still going to be Aphelios with a couple items. He is still a very prominent carry. He still can belt out a lot of damage. And with no hard tanks on the side of Sengoku, you don't have to worry about armor pen almost ever this game. You can go just straight into all your court damage items, get that kind of job done. While you also have Lilia bringing in the magic damage and now with the Karma being flexed into the mid lane as well, you have your magic damage covered. It's at least prominent enough that the enemy team will need to think about it. I am a little bit worried for the Lilia this game, though, as not a whole lot of other champions can really keep pace with Lilia without Karma shielding one of them to move them up along. Reyna can kind of cheat it out with Set, as he can use Hex Flash plus Nimbus Cloak and things like that. But if Sengoku are the ones starting the fight, you're using Renekton and Nidalee to start out to start things off. And you can definitely get things going in your favor very early on. As well as using Ash for Hawk Shots, you can have a lot of extra information. So V3 Esports are gonna kind of need to dance around the vision game and hopefully just bide their time. Likely we'll be seeing V3 Esports giving up the first two Drakes to Sengoku. You don't have a comp that can easily be doing that. Nice thing for Lilia is that it's fairly easy for her to keep pace and farm with Nidalee. She falls a little bit behind if Nidalee goes for hard clears. But it's not that bad and Nidalee doesn't always solo Drake the best. You will have enough priority that your bot lane can rotate over. I think this is one of those games where when I'm looking at it, V3 Esports' downfall could definitely come in the early game and just getting a little over ambitious with what this Aphelios can do and what Lilia can do. We did see Lilia banned a lot of the games in the last uh, in the last few sets as neither team wanted to deal with her right away. But now V3 Esports are the ones throwing down the gauntlet. And they're saying, all right, Sengoku, guess what's on live? Guess what we're here to do? And they're going to send it out on that. So we'll see what Boogie has prepared for the for the Lilia. If you wanted a little bit of post-draft prediction, I gotta say... I gotta say, I gotta say, I think I might want to hand this one to V3 Esports. 
Sengoku has a lot of scaling options, which I think is definitely something that Sengoku can be looking at for this game. And maybe it is a little bit of caster bias coming out that I am a V3 fanboy. But the confidence of locking in a Lilia on game one, you're saying 0-0, zero, zero, don't worry about it, we'll just lock in the Lilia and we'll make it work. I'm hopeful that you'll be able to show us some stuff. I think for Sengoku, though, is the Ash Arrow. If an Ash Arrow ever hits Lilia, she just gets blown up. And that's just kind of the end of that conversation immediately. So you can definitely catch members out as Sengoku's comp here, but... I think in the later ends of the game when V3 has their tanks lined up and you're just running a Protect and a Felios comp, options present itself for a path to victory. And I, I love to see V3 Esports kind of honoring exactly what we've been praising them for in that from minute one, V3 Esports come into this game and they say, you know what, you don't know who's going to carry just yet. We move everything around, we move our positions, we, we flex our champions out. Then you draft up the Aphelios, your hand is shown, but if your hand is being shown on your 4-5 pickups, you, you dealt a good hand and you played it out well. I am, of course, still curious to see what we have in store for us, but we'll see that in the game. V3 Sports vs. Sengoku Gaming no Shiai. Start this. Alright, and starting things along here, I gotta say, the first thing I am noticing is that Paz does not have any items. And yeah, okay, the Observer is going to notice it as well. I imagine Paz should notice before the game starts. He's probably just taking up defensive positioning for now before he backs. But are we going to see a lane swap? To touch quickly on the runes, I think everything is fairly what you'd expect. The Lilia one is, of course, the only champion that hasn't really been shown yet. So her runes are a little bit up in the air. Phase Rush does kind of help you with the slow immunity. So you're not as liable to getting caught out. So they're going to wander into the jungle here. Are V3 Esports going to commit for this one? There are four members of Sengoku here that are going to be very happy to take that fight if they want to, but Paz is also starting the chickens on his side of the map. Well, Boogie should just be able to grab that one, and his team should be able to make it up to the top lane wave. I am not sure what this is. Paz is going very low HP. I think he plans to suicide here and then end up going over to to lane afterwards with teleport if he can grab the red buff. Blank is going to come around here. Did he get the red buff in time? He did. He's going to sneak away with it. So Paz is just going to be able to back and spend the extra gold. Buys a ruby crystal and a... What is this? You know what, V3 Esports? I like it. Let's see some unorthodox players. Oppaman, I'm sure, is not too happy to be seeing this up on his side of the map. Boogie's already level 3. This is, this is unprecedented, and I'm not entirely sure, but they might just be looking to level 3 dive, as Oppenman is still level 1. 
Are they going to be able to execute on this? If Rain is the one to start this up, he has Face Breaker, he has the Haymaker Shield. That's going to be first blood already to Archer. Meanwhile, they're going to try to do the same on the pauses. He's going to crest into level two. He should have either Shield or E leveled, but you have to deal with the afterlife coming out from the from the scion they're going to go for it the knockup's gonna be good but he's no tower aggro just yet pause is just fighting for his life down here as he can't really chase anyone down he should be able to grab up enough of the cs and teleport back to lane afterwards but what is what is this pause is staying even in cs Nice thing is, of course, you do get the kill over to Blank, so he will be able to cash in on the red buff. He'll have it for a little bit. But the map split is a hard punish on this Renekton that is supposed to be a winning lane for Sengoku. Now, V3 Esports have decided they are going to flip this entire game on its head, and they are... I, I love this coming out from V3 Esports as the other thing that benefits this is at least until the 4 through 6 spawns, Blank will be a little bit behind as Boogie was able to get the first rotations down and still has his blue side as well. So he does have that to look forward to while he is leaving chickens half spawned on his side of the map. So Lilia can now move back around. It should be able to cut off the bottom side to keep Paz safe from any further bullying. As well as Archer starting a coal and getting first blood, that is going to be a healthy little gold steroid for Archer to help him try and push past that early game, just sort of hurdle that Aphelios often has to get past. While Abamid, meanwhile, 3 CS. Oh, that's, uh, that's not a fun one at all. You know, normally we see some, like, fasting centers, you know, some reasons that different champions have these lower CS numbers. This is just Abamin saying, what am I to do? I am a lonely crocodile who is about to get dove again if V3 have their way. A little bit harder now to pull off as there it's gonna be. Reyna's gonna start it off again and Oppenman's just gonna go down. There goes Reyna, kites it out beautifully. Are we, uh, V3 Esports might be taking a couple pages out of the Gigabyte Marines playbooks from 2017 Worlds, 2018 Worlds. I'm not sure which one it was, but I don't think Sengoku is very sure of what is going on anymore. As Paz is doing a great job just getting what CS he can down here. About 20 CS down, but compared to the 50 CS down your top laner is. Buki already level 5, zoning off him and completely away. Archer is just going to get first turret in all of the plates from this top side. Especially if Boogie already with this top side control can grab the Rift Herald. But Blink?! AFK in the bush there. The support roams down to the lane he belongs. Almost knocks down Blank. What is happening? As NT is now taking his spot going to support the top lane. He will find Boogie here. But the skirmish is on as a teleport comes in. Archer saying, yeah, I'm right back in it. I bought items. Will it be enough though as Oppenman is already going to go very low. Archer's going to bully him down. Okay, all right, all right, let's, let's slow our roll a little bit here, V3 Esports, as 3,600 gold already over to Archer. Our, our, uh, this, so, okay, so I mentioned earlier, V3 Esports, oh yeah, you know, different carry options, very flexible draft options. I don't think I could have predicted this, and neither did Sengoku from the looks of it, as this is just a mess of a game. Meanwhile, Pyrian and Ace just on the on an island of mid lane right now. They're saying, yeah, you know what? The rest of the map is burning down around us. Let's just let's just farm it out down here. You know, Pyrian's just trying to do what he can as uh, Hexflash not going to make his way over there onto the bot lane. They did end up with the lane swap. And... 
while Oppaman is on the Renekton, you know, it's Renekton, you expect early game winning. Now you're lane swapping into a, into a pause that already has a level advantage on you and it has gold advantage. You're not killing that Scion. That is just not happening. So Renekton is effectively out of this game. You have made him decay so early on. And meanwhile, Archer is just about a thousand gold ahead of Yutonameashi right now from those kills and all the turret plates he's been acquiring. Sengoku game are going to be struggling to make plays happen this early on as V3 are going to start up this Rift Herald. You're, you're strong enough to really do it and kind of force your will this game. Unless Sengoku has something to say about it, of course Pyrian could be the tide turner now that he's finally showing up for these fights, but Rift Herald already down. You can spawn it up in the top lane immediately and knock down that turret. But some pings are coming out towards the bot lane turret, so maybe they're looking to just kind of bump up the Scion's gold, get him back into tanky boy status that you need for this game. Favor to Blank, he has been doing a great job of keeping up in CS. Empyrean getting what CS advantage he can in the mid lane has been very helpful. But there's still a little bit of a ways to go for Pyrian at least to be able to get towards the items he needs and the carry status that he wants. So it looks like the game is going to start slowing down a little bit. So we're starting to return to normal. I'm at... Oh! Is this what V3 are planning? They're trying to double down on how many turret plates you can acquire as they're going to spawn the Rift Herald up in the bot lane here. Giving just an obscene amount of gold over to Archer so early on. That's going to be another little chunk there over to Archer. As Paz in the top lane is not enjoying himself as much as he thought he might be. But Optimum happy to just be in a 1v1 with another melee champion. We'll see if Sengoku can make a play. Now would be your time as a good sidestep on the arrow. Reyna might be going down. Don't think he has anywhere to really run. The teleport's coming in, but it's going to be a little bit late. He's going to flash for the shuffle. While Boogie is here to deter any further advantage, but now Pyrian has kind of left himself in a bad spot. We'll be able to blast Cone out to safety. Unless Ace flashes for him, he can get for a flash tether, but does back out of that one in the end. A good shuffle from Pyrian to be able to stop that teleport. Don't know if V3 could have been able to make a play happen there, but the devil you know is better than the devil you don't, and Pyrian happy to just expend his ultimate for that one. And first Drake's going over to Sengoku was an expected outcome. With Infernal on the menu, though, that's going to change things quite a bit. We'll watch this play one more time. This is just the advantage that Sengoku's comp has, is that finding engages like this is a little bit more consistent for V3 Esports. At least until Scion is online and able to utilize his ultimate around the map. You know, just sending in that Scion charge. Not a whole lot of engage potential from Reyna. He can counter engage very well, but also is somewhat hung out to dry, especially as he has not been picking up nearly any of the gold. Yes, it's all been funneled onto Archer so far. While another arrow is going to land his way onto Reyna, he has, he has the W to be able to shield through a little bit, so a good trade over to Yutotomayashi, but a little bit of an aggressive arrow, all things considered, is Boogie is doing a great job of just keeping pace and farm with the Nidalee. And I'm very curious to see where V3 decide that they're going to be taking their fight. They haven't been able to delay the Drakes as long as you like, and now you're starting to look at Soul Point on top of actual Soul itself for Sengoku if you let any more Drakes go over. So that's sort of a benefit to Sengoku right now, is while you are down a little bit in gold, up in Drake count with an, with an important Soul on the line, is sort of an option they can explore as Reyna's not quite going to get the face breaker there onto Enti. 
can't quite be capitalized off of just yet as Archer is trying to nab up that final turret in the bot lane. Some pings coming out to kind of protect him, but it's going to be Sengoku, the ones that want the fight. You can just fire off another ultimate there from NT if he so chooses. Flashes forward to get the death charge down. A lot of minions in the way of blank, so he can't find the spear. And that's going to deter most of that play for now as Reyna's facebreaker is not quite going to land again. But ultimately, just keeping plays from happening is is all the benefit that V3 really want. Meanwhile, in the top lane, nice thing for Oppman is that eventually you will be able to get into the Bork Cleaver and you will be somewhat prominent in a split push scenario versus pause. But as it stands right now, laning phase is on a short-lived timer and always looking to be pushed shorter by V3 Esports as they're trying to knock down this last turret. Archer wants it. He baits out the ultimate, fires one back of his own. A couple autos going over to Yutonime Eshi will force out the heal from him there as the turret finally falls. You cannot stop Archer for very long. As right now, V3 Esports are doing a great job. Almost a two and a half K gold advantage, just about, and the turret plates. 6, 1620 gold already to V3 Esports' side, while Sengoku has only been able to nab up a couple in the face of Paz. And I think it's important to talk about the long-term ramifications of this game from V3 Esports, if they are able to close this out, because now... Sengoku are thinking to themselves, do we need to be banning Scion? Is this something that we need to be worried about? Is it a Lilia issue? What is going wrong? And in a, in a series like this, where multiple games are going to be played, Sengoku is going to be on the ones to make decisions about whether or not they need to make the mid-set adaptations necessary. And being so lately opted or late opted into by V3 Esports in terms of the draft, I am impressed and hopeful for V3 Esports. This is another turret that's going to be going over to Archer. He's almost at two items by 15 minutes. And those are ADC items. Those are not the cheap items. This is an Infinity Edge and about to be a Rudance, if I am not mistaken, but We'll see if Sengoku can get a little bit of love back over to the bot lane here. Pause alone under turret. Some pings are coming out, but most of the focus from V3 is in the mid lane. And with Sion having the wave clear that he does, he's able to make the most of it. Oh, he's in a great position now. If they want to look for a fight, Ace is running in. There goes the Sion ultimate. Not quite going to get the knock up on the Enti, but he will get the slow off so Ace can find the route. The rest of the cavalry is here, but Enti should be able to retreat to safety. But right now, that'll just leave V3 in prime position to be able to move over to that Infernal Drake. As they're already going to be starting that one up, DPS going to be forced into that one. Lands the E onto Pyrian. A little bit of extra damage, but... Right now, V3 Esports lost their main engage tool, and an arrow flying onto Paz might mean he goes down as well, as Reyna's going to be able to pop the W to keep himself safe. No, the volley is going to be able to find him. Paz going to fall as well, as the rest of the team should just be able to back out with the Infernal Drake. Losing two is not exactly an ideal scenario, but objective acquired, and you can kind of just shrug off the remainder of that one. Still retaining a gold advantage for now of about a 1,000. Not the worst position in the world to be in if you are V3 Esports. And that was sort of possibly pause. Once he uses the ultimate on Scion, you, like we mentioned, lose your main engage for a play that the rest of the team wasn't quite able to follow up on. Sort of a little bit rough. For V3 Esports in the resulting dragon fight, you do get the Infernal Drake, so not a bad deal. But certainly not a deal as, yeah, a lot, just all of the carries are just way too far away. And nothing that Lilia can really hit to get the move speed starting to stack up. And I'm a little bit surprised Boogie doesn't go for a flash play here to try and get something started off as... 
the amount of grouping that Sengoku had right there easily could have been exploited. But Boogie was kind of a little bit busy scrapping with Blink on the other end of the map. So once you get the Infernal Drake, if that's your focus, that's your focus. Take it. Ro roll with it. Not a bad position to be in as... We will reset to neutral ground for now, unless we see any last minute fights for this Rift Herald, and it looks like V3 Esports are going to be taking that one. And it's going to be fairly uncontested while the rest of Sengoku's playing a little bit more heavily towards this bottom side as they're still struggling to crack open their first turret. Well, the gold lead will even back up. V3 Esports might be able to battle back a little bit by opening up this mid lane turret, setting themselves up some more vision area. Meanwhile, Paz is trying to walk into this turret range. He's already been now down a level 2 Oppoman, who has been trying to claw himself back into this game. Well, it looks like Sengoku are going to be trying to secure vision around this barren area. And I do kind of want to talk about that because we mentioned earlier the insane stat that was, or that is still, 77.8% win rate on blue side in the LJL playoff so far. And it, part of it will hold that thought. Blank messes up the W over the wall. is going to be forced to flash away there. So Rift Herald is spawned up. It's not going to knock down the turret on the first charge. We'll get it at least low, but... Not a bad... Eh, it's not the best option. Not the worst option in the world. V3 Esports kind of just taking that one on the nose. As a, a lot of other options weren't really going to be presenting itself to V3 Esports. You don't have strong split pushers. You have Scion, who will just kind of exist in the side lanes with... Uh, with Oppoman, he's not going to be bullying him out and he's not going to be shoving him under turret So you're not exactly looking to get gold anywhere else Just trying to crack open the mid lane turret a little bit wider is all you can really count on But one thing I do sort of kind of want to focus on specifically with Sengoku and, or excuse me, with like the blue side advantage for V3 Esports was V3 Esports on the blue side, a lot of the plays we ended up seeing were always revolved either around a bard or some easy access over the walls. It was something that V3 kind of, or that DFM really took advantage of in their last series. And I'm curious to see, because while V3 Esports doesn't have the best options over the wall, just having the easier access, trying to force Sengoku forward into, into a potential Scion waiting in the bush. We've all, we've all experienced that moment of being in a bush and a Scion is just fully charging a, the, his decimate. He's just sitting there waiting for you and then you're knocked up for the next two minutes and you have no idea why. We've all been there. It never is fun. And if V3 Esports can set up that situation, that's a great way for them to start up a fight without having to expend a Scion ultimate. Holding vision control around this dragon pit is another great way to set that kind of thing up. Fortunately, Blank can be scouting out with spears, trying to throw them in, while V3 starting up the Drake here. Reyna's looking for something. The ultimate is good, and the sleep from Lilia is better. Finds both carries, and that's a beautiful setup for Paz. The wombo combo as the ultimate from Reyna is going to pull him right back in. Boogie, I think, found that off of a stray E. That's the power of Lilia, and Sengoku got educated firsthand by that one. Ooh, I didn't even see the E land necessarily, and maybe Sengoku missed it as well, because then they were left quite literally asleep at the wheel. And that's going to mean Baron for V3 Esports, that's going to mean a huge amount of tempo over to them, as they're going to pivot back over to the Infernal Drake, grab that one up, take a reset, and look to knock down this mid lane turret. That could have been something that potentially blew this game wide open. Is they're going to walk that over to this Infernal Drake. 
Sengoku might posture for a re-engage on it. As V3 Esports hasn't gotten it back yet, they can try to force the issue. But Paz is going to be able to zone a lot for now. He is quite a tanky member. The Ash Arrow is going to find him, but going to use the Mikhail's from Reyna to get him out there. V3 Esports cutting their losses are going to pass over the Infernal Drake. Will mean soul point for Sengoku. Not a bit, not a terrible situation for V3, but we'll watch this fight one more time. So eyes go to Lilia, just that little deer wandering around. The E flies out, finds two. Click that R button, the sleepy time you go. And Blank is like, I'm not taking that si that Scion charge. Goes right into both of them. The double damage comes out. What a snipe from the Lilia as Reyna says, yeah, I'll flash over for the jungler. That means a free Baron. You lose soul point, which is a little bit unfortunate. But what can you make work? You've already gotten a turret off of the Baron. Right now, V3 Esports just need to put themselves in the driver's, be driver's seat and take advantage of this Baron power play while they have it. And the other benefit, of course, for V3 is that now Scion is starting to get even tankier. This is something that is relevant to doing this strat that V3 is pulling off, specifically with Scion. The way his W works in giving extra HP, which means larger shields, from his W passive comes into play whether he kills them, whether he's getting all the CS or not. Just minions dying around him means he's getting extra shields, which means he can posture better as a tank. It's sort of the infinite scaling tank stack, quote unquote, allowed by Scion, where if he's running low econ, he at least has a fat enough shield to keep him in tow. But he's even in items with Oppaman. He's a little bit ahead of Oppaman in items on a, just a very slight basis. So he's well and tanky enough to make this one work. So another E is going to be flying out here. You got to dodge those bowling balls. As an arrow's going to fly out, Mikhail's going to be pumped right away. So Archer's not going to be safe from that one. The Moonlight Vigil flies back as well. Sort of trading R's from the AD carries. Will mean that in the end, V3 will just be taking a little bit of a back off for now. 2,000 gold is not a bad position to be in after that Baron is over. It's not ideal for V3 Esports, uh, given that you had to give up soul point for it. But they can continue their pressure for now and continue looking for something as Reyna's going around the back end here. Paz is going very low. But they will get the turret in the end as Depth Charge and Ultimate are offline. That'll just mean that V3 Esports can back away. Another E just flying them out. This is sort of... That's the... The ult, that's one of the abilities that is very important to Lilia is of course her R is the team fight tool but you can fish so hard with those bowling balls just sending them on down the lane see what sticks and you honestly lose nothing for it it's like a conditional ash arrow that you can just bowl down the lane whenever you feel like it but again, a return to neutral for now will mean that V3 Esports have a little bit of time before this Infernal Drake. They will need to be aggressive on Vision for it because you cannot afford to give it up anymore. And Baron is going to be coming a little bit after, so you don't have to worry about Sengoku rushing down Baron in the meantime. Now, one thing to kind of keep an eye out for in this remaining minute is if Sengoku decided to be firing off an arrow, seeing if he can punish any of the solo lanes. Right now, you've been relying heavily on Mikhail's, but hold that thought. It looks like V3 Esports are going to be the ones looking for a pick. Archer is just saying, hi, I'm the AD telling you, teleporting in behind you. Don't mind me. It's typically the other way around, as I'm sure Oppaman would be happy to tell you. You usually see the top lane f off the teleport flank, but with how fed Archer is, he just teleports right in, and there's no dash opportunity for Oppaman. He just goes down there, not going to burn his flash. He knows he's dead. As Again, Mikhail's going to be popped over. Got to keep his top laner safe. Honestly, getting great value out of that, uh, out of that cleansing ability from ace in the mid lane he has been 
on that instantly, been keeping his team safe, and every Ash arrow has just been kind of stuffed right in the faces of Sengoku. So we're going to open up the map just that little bit wider. I'm going to be walking with Reyna here to get a little bit of a warding adventure. Just putting down as much vision control as you can before retreating back to that Drake. They should be able to grab this one fairly uncontested. It should be burned down before Sengoku can even approach, given the amount of fog that they have to get through just to make it here. Infernal Drake's gonna go down, the sleep is already gone off, that's gonna be onto the Nidalee, and the Nautilus is gonna set up for a huge face breaker, as Showstopper's gonna pull out the jungler there, and he's gonna be next to fall, you told me as she's trying to kite this one out, he's doing a beautiful job so far, but right now his teammates are falling on all sides, he's making it work so far! As he will end up going down in the end. A beautiful flash from Boogie to be able to get out of that one in the end. While Ace is going to land the snare onto Oppaman. This might just be curtains for Sengoku. As Pyrian is just putting up this turret. He's saying, please, this is my last line of defense. But right now, B3 Esports' attention is turned towards the Baron. After another successful fight win. While you may be two drakes away, you're about 7k gold up, so it doesn't exactly matter if this game takes another 10 minutes to get to your Infernal Soul. V3 Esports are looking to put this one away. Six, oh, and three. Archer is already popping off. And what an insane confidence boost from v3 esports to have this dominant of a performance but then to archer specifically to be just be this far ahead on a hyper carry like aphelios set him up and knock him down as set is very happy to take advantage of that sleep i i huge praise to you totemiyashi here who does everything he can to kite this one out Almost knocks down Boogie, but a beautiful flash actually gets out of the volley just before it connects with him. I was actually surprised he lived out on that one. But ultimately, it will just be the continued show of V3 Esports stressing their gold advantage, strutting their stuff, and trying to put this one away. Pyrian can lane clear at all he wants. It is slowly being removed from his power. Especially if any of those abilities land from Boogie. It sets up that sleep so nicely. And for those of you that have not seen Lilia, of course, all of her abilities apply a DOT over the course of three seconds. And while that DOT is active, she can activate her R to simulate or to activate a sleep status effect uh, you'll know it from Zoe's Sleepy Trouble Bubble. And that's sort of the the selling point, is that Boogie can get multiple people in the ultimates if you have multiple DOTs running at the same time. But right now, just pushing in even further... I actually super love what Paws has here with the Zeke's Convergence, and being able to combo that with Archer's ultimate just adds that little extra damage, and you can let Set go for things like the Dead Man so that he can make plays happen right away, as Scion's just going to charge on out of that one, says he doesn't really want to be a part of that scene anymore, there goes an arrow, he's going to land and sway on to Ace there, Forcing him back, but V3 Esports should just continue their onslaught for now. Arrow already down. Only thing really pressing V3 right now is that you don't have a hard engage tool outside of the Scion, but you can keep the split push up for now. 2,000 gold for a Baron. Honestly, not a bad deal by any means, as they might be able to knock down this turret as well. Gonna be pushing in onto that one. Oppaman doing what he can to hold on to the bot one. While Paz is just trying to escort in the waves. His team is coming in tow. Baron is gonna be going offline, so they lose a bit of their pushing potential. But just in time for them to get a reset off, spend that extra gold, move over to the Infernal Drake. As that will kind of be one of the last stands for Sengoku if they decide to contest for it, as 
Stacking up that many Infernal Drakes will really uh, help mitigate the nerfs that Aphelios otherwise might have. We've already known how what kind of 200 years of experience can do for Aphelios. A 200 years with four Infernal Drakes? A little bit more intimidating uh, for the side of Sengoku. It's just such an obscene amount of gold on Archer. It's just... There's not much else you can really say other than how... Just obscene is the only word you can really describe with it is... Boogie's going in here. He's got to throw an E onto Op. I mean, two people seems to be enough. He's got to pop the ultimate there. Scion's going to be charging in. He's oh, just barely going to drift on by Yutotomi Eshi. But now he's kind of cut off his escape while the rest of his team is running down Op. I mean, got to flash over the wall. Now be in a position to cut off Blank. As the rest of the team looks like they're trying to reconvene with him there. But two kills over. They can retreat back to the Infernal Drake. Or they can try to pressure out for these inhibitors and take that as a consolation prize afterwards. I like V3 Esports taking the more aggressive of the two options, trying to see what damage they can do to the base while they have man advantage. And that was an immediate teleport up to the top side by Paz. He's looking to make sure they can get all three inhibitors before they have to go over to that Infernal, Infernal Drake. Not quite going to get the third one, but not a bad deal at all. Pa is going to be backing away to safety. While V3 Esports should just be able to burn down the Drake, grab that one up, and sit on an 11k gold advantage until the Baron and until the next Infernal Soul. I am a little bit surprised to see a lack of QSSs coming out from Sengoku, given the amount of times that Boogie has just been able to find value from situations exactly like this. You pop the sleep, Scion goes in, everyone else is respecting a Scion, while the rest of your team is asleep and sitting in the front lines with nowhere to go. Honestly, if this is just an impressive showing from the side of V3 Esports this early on. And, of course, you know, there's not a whole lot left to say about this one. V3 Esports going to be able to grab up this Baron, most likely. This might be the last stand for the rest of Sengoku, if you want to risk it all. Decent amount of items on Pyrian. He can go for a play. He can try and go for a little bit of a shuffle, make something happen. We'll see if Sengoku are able to pull it off as an arrow. Ooh, just barely could have missed out on Boogie. Will burn his flash in the end, though, but the re-engage is coming out here from V3 Esports. Raid is deep into everyone. Stoneplate going to keep him alive for now, while meanwhile, Paz going to take his turn in the front lines. Archer's just full HP and free firing for this entire fight. Two members already down on the side of Sengoku. Is there going to chase down Yutotomayashi as well? Lilia. Going to be picking up that kill. And now V3 Esports are going to put this one away. Honestly, an impressive first game coming out from V3 Esports. Beautiful stuff. T start to finish. And honestly, I couldn't ask for a better game if you were V3 Esports. That's textbook. You draft this one up in the playroom. You brought it to the main stage. And you showed Sengoku what you're bringing to the table. Sengoku, you're either going to have, you need to find answers or pull something out of your own sleeves. Because right now, V3 look like they're playing for keeps. We are going to be taking a quick break for just a little while here. Going to be resting my voice in the meantime while we move over for the next game. Don't go anywhere if you guys are enjoying the stream. Feel free to drop a follow. Thank you guys for who have already dropped a follow so far today. Uh, if you guys do not know, I am Dr. No. I do all English broadcasting for the LJL. So that means any English stream that you want to see of the minor reasons, especially going into Worlds, you want to be the guy that can brag to your friends, hey, I know these minor regions. I know these teams. You can tune into Dr. No, who will give you all the information, background, and 
upcoming stats on these kinds of teams. So if you guys are enjoying my content, really do appreciate the follows. It helps me do what I love as we are on the road to partner program. Would be awesome to get there, but I really appreciate you guys showing up nonetheless. Again, I'm going to be taking a quick break before we get into our next game. Don't go anywhere. そしてところも合わせてターバルトガツガツ取ってスノーボールです。完璧でしたね。それだったらなんかプレスターのとかもちょっと出てきそうですけれども、その辺りの戦略の幅どこまで V3 戦国の強みであるブーンをまずは V3 